coming up tonight on Murrow News 8, a sad day in Pullman after a beloved professor was found dead. Plus, a new development in the Ukraine protest. And we have a new country leading in the Olympic medal count. Find out who it is, those stories tonight on Murrow News 8. From Studio B on the campus of Washington State University, this is Pullman's only nightly newscast. This is Murrow News 8. Good evening, I'm Brittany Cardoza. And I'm Brenna Kelly. Thanks for joining us tonight. We begin with a developing story. A WSU history professor was found dead in Pullman today. Scott Stratton's family notified police last night that he had not returned home after walking his dog Mojo. Police assisted the family in the search for Stratton until dawn when officials found his body in the upper pond at Sunnyside Park. The Whitman County coroner has tentatively ru ruled the death accidental and officials say there is no sign of foul play. Stratton students say that he told them he suffered from a medical condition. Police will continue to investigate and determine the cause of death. Stratton students have been expressing their grief on Twitter by saying he had a true passion for teaching. The Ukrainian president and the opposition leader agreed today to negotiations to stop the violent protests that have rocked the country. The announcements come one day after brutal clashes between demonstrators and police. It left at least 26 dead and 250 injured. Both the president and the opposition leader announced the agreement on their respective websites. The opposition leader says that the next round of negotiations are expected to start tomorrow. New intelligence has led the United States government to alert airlines to the possibility of terrorists attempting to plant explosives in shoes. Although officials have stressed that there is no specific threat, the United States and other countries have collected intelligence that indicates terrorist groups are working on new designs for the shoe bomb. The Department of Homeland Security issued the warning. Protesters gathered outside the Venezuelan Justice Building today in support of Leopoldo Lopez. He's being held responsible for five deaths in anti-government protests in Venezuela. Four anti-government protesters and one government supporter are dead. Lopez turns himself in to the authorities Tuesday, but denied the accusations of terrorism against him. He is seeking witness accounts from protesters on what actually happened to use as his defense. Did you see that sunshine outside after this afternoon? I did. It was so nice, but there was some snow this morning. What's up with that, Ben? Well, absolutely. It was absolutely beautiful outside, but I will fill you guys in right after the break. Mm -hmm. Don't go away. Oh, oh wow, that's awkward. <laughs> see the stars at the local Pullman Observatory. It connects the dots between what's happening and those who need to know it. And lift off of Space Shuttle Discovery. We bring you the news you need when you need it. For Murrah News 8, I'm Bridget Larson. If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Welcome back. We had some nice weather today. Did you get outside to enjoy the sunshine at all? I did. It was a little windy, but we got some sun. How hot did it get today, Ben? Well, of course, we did have some sun breaks today, but mostly it was pretty cloudy, a high of 39 with gusts up to 17 miles per hour, even gusts even going up to 34 miles per hour, so blowing a lot of people off the streets here in Pullman. Taking, out, taking a look at our forecast for tomorrow, it is supposed to be a snow advisory over tonight. Get one to three inches, 41 degrees your temperature tomorrow morning, 42 in the afternoon, and then 34 by tomorrow night. Taking a look at our state map right here across the state of Washington on the west side, still pretty wet with temperatures in the mid 40s in central Washington, about 43 in Wenatchee, 49 down in Yakima, and then out here near in the Palouse, 
we got 40 in Spokane, 39 degrees in Pullman. And finally, taking a look at our five day forecast, uh, pretty, pretty even in the mid 30s with a high of 35 on Friday and dropping down to the low 20s. Guys, back to you at the desk. Thanks, Ben. Skiers and snowboarders should be excited with the amount of snow accumulating in the mountains. Our reporter, Tenzin Chappelle, has headed to one of the most popular ski resorts in the Pacific Northwest to see how much snow we can expect this season. It's been a rough winter season for skiers, but it looks like peak conditions <laughs> have finally arrived at Schweitzer Mountain Resort. Fresh powder over the last week has skiers pumped up for the middle of the season, but Schweitzer had only reached half of its expected snowfall entering the first two months of 2014. With less snow, day pass sales have been down. However, Sean Miris, director of marketing, says that attendance has been high because of an increase in season pass holders. Compared to last year, we're actually about 3% behind last year, but we're about 3% of our budget for this year. And a lot of that is due to our season pass holders. We get great turnout from our season pass holders, so they're actually way above budget. But regular day ticket sales are a little bit behind. Mira says the next few weeks are promising for both skiers and business. In fact, over 20 inches of snow has fallen in the last 72 hours. With a three-day weekend, a few students from WSU were able to enjoy the mountain. Sophomore Jack Fennell frequently comes to ski and is satisfied with the current conditions. It's nice to be able to come over here and get some of the better conditions in the country. So I'd say this weekend's probably the best so far. According to Miris, Northwest ski resorts are having much better conditions than most mountains on the West Coast, with winter season at Schweitzer projected to stay open till mid-April. Schweitzer is the largest ski resort in Idaho, and with snowfall expected to pick up in the next few weeks, you can expect more people to flock towards the mountains. From Schweitzer Mountain Resort in Sandpoint, Idaho, Tenzin Chopel, Murrow News 8. Coming up next, we've got a break, and then Kenzie Carlson will give you the sports highlights, especially about the Olympics, plus the 76ers new signee. Don't go away. Same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. Four Cougar volleyball players will attend the U.S. national team tryouts this weekend in Colorado Springs. Junior Verlia Hardaway, sophomore Kate Summer, and freshman Emmy Allen and Kyra Holt are among 248 athletes from 106 colleges to participate in the three-day tryouts. After tryouts, two teams will be selected by the USA national team officials. An 18-year-old boy with Down syndrome got the gift of a lifetime when an NBA team signed him to a two-day ceremonial contract. CNN reporter Nichelle Turner has the story. From Bennett Salem High School, number 33, Kevin Meet the new breakout star of the Philadelphia 76ers, already a fan favorite and the center of the team huddle. His name is Kevin Grow. Before he was a free agent, the 18-year-old with Down syndrome was already a star player. For four years, Kevin was the manager of the Ben Salem High School basketball team. With two minutes remaining in the final game of the season, Kevin's coach took him off the bench and put him in the game. He scored four three-pointers, knocking in this buzzer beater. After the play went viral, it was only a matter of time before the pros came calling. The Sixers signed Kevin to a ceremonial two-day contract with the team. Congratulations. Me too. 
I know you can shoot, but you can play defense too. Yeah. Okay. I say we give him a three day contract. <laughs> Kevin hit the court for team practice, sporting his new custom jersey, scoring extra points with fans and family. The joy and love that he brings is, is, uh, is just incredible. The USA men's hockey team dominated in their 5-2 win over the Czech Republic. American Phil Kessel scored in the third period to seal the win. The U.S. never trailed in the game. The team moves into the semifinals where they will take on Canada. The teams previously met during the 2010 Olympic Finals, which the Canadians won in overtime 3-2. The U.S. will look to avenge that loss Friday. USA has jumped on top of the total Olympic medal count with 23. Right behind, Russia and the Netherlands are tied with 22 apiece. USA had two women's bobsled teams finish on the podium for the first time in Olympic history. To add to the U.S. medals, Ted Leggetti grabbed gold in the men's giant slalom. To stay on pace, Russians had three medal-winning performances on Tuesday. In fourth place is Norway and with 20 medals and Canada following with 18. That's all the sports we have for you tonight. Coming up after the break, we have a story out of Sochi that is not about the athletes. Stay tuned. I'm one on Monkey Guy. The chance of being involved in a robbery is 1 in 757. The chances of being struck by lightning. <laughs> 750,000. Please fasten your seatbelts for unexpected turbulence. The chances of being a victim in an airline crash? 1 in 29 million. Hey, could I get some peanuts? The chances of being involved in a car crash are far greater than lightning strikes and plane crashes. And if you are texting while driving, your risk of crash increases 23 times. Now, I may be an unlucky guy, but I don't have to be part of that statistic, and neither do you. Drive responsibly. Welcome back. One Olympic medalist is gaining worldwide attention on and off the slopes. Gus Kenworthy was scheduled to return to Colorado on Monday from Sochi, but his homecoming has been postponed. The silver medalist in slope style, style skiing excuse me, found four stray puppies and their mother and is not going on without them. U.S. skiing official says Kenworthy delayed his plan so he could finish the adoption paperwork for the canines. Washington State athletes show their impressive skills on more than just the field of play. A total of 446 student athletes posted a 2.96 grade point average for the 2013 fall semester, surpassing the general student population which posted a 2.8. Overall, seven sport programs posted a team GPA of a 3.0 or above and 21 students earned a perfect 4.0. The title of most influential candy bar of all time belongs to the Kit Kat. Time Magazine published a list of the top 13 influential candy bars. Kit Kat came in first, while Hershey's Milk Chocolate finished second. Time says the candy bar has become a global obsession. Kit Kat opened its first store in Tokyo just years after releasing its unusual flavors, including wasabi, edamame, and sweet potato. College students may want to put down their Hot Pockets. Nestle USA issued a recall of two varieties of Hot Pockets. Philly steak and cheese are being recalled because they may contain meat the department deemed unsafe. No illness has been reported in relation to the recall, but consumers should return the product to the place of purchase for a full re refund, according to Nestle. That's all the news we have for tonight. Tune in every night at 7 and 10 o'clock. Have a good night. Thank you.